I will do. There's a sock. Welcome to Dead Good Book Reviews, I'm Judith. I have absolutely no idea what the lighting's like because I'm in my living room and this is a reading vlog. I'm performing in a burlesque dance show on Tuesday. It is now Saturday and I have just a thousand and one million things I have to do this weekend. Also I have to read this weekend because it's coming up to the end of the month and my TBR is kind of kicking me in the butt. So essentially I just don't have the brain power, the mental health, the stability, the ability to do the thing to film a video tomorrow that's a more scripted traditional kind of video um, because believe it or not as much as I waffle uh, and do sound like this all of the time sometimes I try and script them. Hopefully you'll still enjoy this reading vlog. I am going to make it book related. You're not just going to get to see me attempting to work out what I need to do with my hair and makeup before Tuesday. It's Saturday again. It's all fine. Um, I'm going to be interspersing doing all of the things I have to do with reading Gideon the Ninth, which is on my TBR. If you've not watched my TBR, you're very much welcome to. I've read most of it now, just at the last kind of Drips and drabs. So yes, I'm gonna try and finish Gideon the Ninth. I started this morning before I went out and bought everything that Superdrug ever made, uh, and I'm on page 25. So I'm gonna be reading chunks of this, doing check-ins throughout the day. Uh, I am doing a lot of makeup trials throughout the day, so if my face changes uh, as we go, you're just gonna have to live with it. If and when I finish that, because I'm an overachiever, I'm gonna try and read Bone Cries Moon as well. Um, I think I can read both. I might extend this vlog into Sunday and then split it in two. I'll see how much waffling I do about necromancy. I hope this is okay. I would love to produce a very wonderfully thought out video tomorrow, but for the good of my brain, I'm not gonna do that. And I think that being aware of your own mental health is important and being aware of your own capabilities is important. So yeah, this is me doing that thing. I will see you when I next check in. All right, hello. It is some time later, like an hour later maybe? I've been reading. I am 89 pages in, so just at the start of what this book calls, I think like an act, I mean act two? Yeah, act two. Um, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I mentioned in a previous video, I think, or maybe even in this one, I can't remember. It was so long ago that I started this before. I started this on the day I got it. Uh, when I was waiting for a very very delayed train and I got about this far and I think I must have gone a little bit further probably about Another couple of chapters through but wasn't taking it in just re really wasn't <laughs> um, Especially now rereading it. I'm like, oh now everything makes sense So I'm gonna put spoilers in this so this is a general spoiler alert that there may be spoilers incoming in that I'm going to tell you about what I'm reading about so the later it gets in the video I guess maybe the less you should watch if you don't want to be spoiled for this book is that enough of a disclaimer? Uh, I might be put timestamps if I talk about anything particularly drastic. So anyway, we have Gideon, who's our very, very gay main character. Like within the first five minutes, you're aware of that, um, which I love, I think it's really good. And she lives on this ninth planet as part of the ninth house. Um, and she's basically good at fighting, but she really wants to leave and she can't leave. And through a series of events, uh, she ends up leaving. <laughs> Kelsa Breeze, but with another person from the head of the house who's a necromancer, who's I think the main character in the second book. I will get back to you on that. So they've headed off to some planet somewhere because they're gonna become the Emperor's necromancers and cavaliers, which is basically swords people. Um, and so far they've just got there. That's where we're up to at chapter nine. And it's a little bit of subterfuge. It's a little bit of we can't, be completely honest about who we are and it definitely shouldn't be Gideon who's going, it should have been some other guy that he's left. Um, yeah, I don't have a huge amount to say. I really like this. I thought I wasn't gonna get on with the tone because it's quite casually written for fantasy. Um, well, is, is it fantasy, is it sci-fi? These are the real questions. Um, it's very kind of casually written, but actually I think it's really good fun and I think that it's different enough from other things I've read that I am enjoying it. And I think it's something that will build as it goes. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, that's what, in 90 pages of 450. So if I check in every 100 pages or so, or every time we get to the end of the act, let's find out. It'll be a thrilling adventure for all of us. And hopefully I get more coherent as this goes on. I'm gonna have lunch now. So hopefully the next time you see me, I will be fed and thus more coherent. Let's find out. I promise I've moved from this place. I just really can't be bothered to move my camera. Hello, it is uh, 
like an hour later, it's half one. I am 179 pages in, I've just hit chapter 16. Uh, I, this is getting better and better with every chapter. I am enjoying it more and more. Um, it's really reminding me of Starsight, which is the second book in the Skywood series by Brandon Sanderson. But if Starsight was unapologetically gay and also not for teens, but it's the, it's the you're stuck in a situation uh, where you're having to kind of learn and train and do all this stuff, but you can't reveal to anyone who you are. Um, and it, this may also be impacted by the fact that I'm re-watching The Good Place again, uh, and that's fun. This is a terrible camera angle. So yeah, those kind of fish out of water stories I've been reading a heck of a lot of lately, and this is definitely one of them. But again, more gay, very much more gay. I'm looking forward to the next kind of stage of things. So we had at the beginning in the place, then revealed that they're going to the new place, getting to the new place, and then like we've had just kind of got to the end of the scene setting of the new place where they are uh, and now we're at the all right now we're getting to what the plot actually is and what they need to do uh, i am expecting the big twist of oh actually everything's terrible to happen within the next kind of this much within the next hundred or so pages just because surely that's what's going to happen uh, this kind of story you just know that it's going to be oh you all thought you were training to work for this person it was going to be wonderful but actually it's going to be terrible and you're all going to die or have to kill a bunch of people or go completely against your values or something something along those lines that's where we're, what I'm suspecting will happen side note I am definitely this skull like yeah that's me but anyway I can't dilly dally reading for much longer because I'm going to go dye my hair because my roots are absolutely terrible and that's another one of the things on my list to do today so I'll be back in like a couple of hours probably maybe I'll shoot in a different location maybe I'll go read in my reading room maybe this whole video won't just be me stood in front of my very grey sofa with a very grey background but I do have a cool print above let's see if I can show you my cool print that's my cool print it's a lady next to loads of poisons and that brings me joy. Anyway, I'm gonna go put chemicals on my head. See you then. Yeah, just realized that my microphone was unplugged this whole time. I have no idea what the audio is like on this camera because I bought the camera with the microphone and I've never used them separately. Sorry, editing me. That's gonna be a bit of a nightmare for you to have to explain. Anyway, I'm at page 256. I've just got to the start of chapter 23. I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good book. I think. The more I read it, the more I realise, oh, you really have to be in the right mindset to read this. And that's true of most books, and probably something I need to keep in mind more, and is probably the biggest disadvantage of having a TBR, that you kind of have to read books when you read them. I'm definitely gonna knock this candle off. I just, you know there's a candle there, I know there's a candle there, I'm a very fancy lady. Some books just take more headspace than others do, and it's not a case of genre, and it's not a case of a age group. It's not that I can read a middle grade and it's all fine and wonderful, but a fantasy book I find really difficult because I've read middle grades that have taken me ages and fantasy books that have taken me no time at all. But there's just some fiction just takes more out of me than other books does, and this is one of those books that takes more out of me. It requires me to remember people and what's happening in a way that some other books don't, and maybe that makes me dim. I don't know. So yes, I'm, I'm more and more understanding that this was not a book to try and pick up on a whim at a train station, uh, but is in fact a nice book to read on a Saturday afternoon when you're doing other things like dyeing your hair. By the way, not too bad, not too bad. One day I will learn to dye my hair without getting hair dye all over my neck. But we're not there yet, I'm just not that person yet. Anyway, we're talking about Gideon the Ninth. Gideon and Harrow have been solving puzzles left and right, there's a lot of do we work together, do we work separately going on, and I think it's really cool. But I don't have that much more else to say, and I feel like I should. And maybe it's the immediacy of vlogging it, is that you have to have an opinion when you've not finished the book and had any time to process it yet. My immediate reaction is sort of just like, yep, I'm reading it, it's a book. That's not unusual. That's not that this is bad. I just don't have a huge amount to say. Oh, this is gonna be a real boring blog unless I come up with something. What I'm enjoying is reading a sci-fi book where someone's just gay and that doesn't matter or it hasn't mattered yet. Oh, get my thumb real big. Uh, a sci-fi book where someone's just gay and it just doesn't matter. So there are nine houses, I think eight of which have people, I'm not sure. And it's not like the Hunger Games. It's not like house two is great at 
cheesemongering, or if that is the case, that isn't just the world building. Um, because often books go, right, I came up for one for everything, so that's done. Uh, wash my hands of that, don't need to do any more world building. Where this is more, all the world building has been done for this story, and you really do experience the world through the eyes of someone coming from a completely different house who's been quite isolated, which I think is interesting. I can't, I can't decide if I like Gideon or not. And I think this book kind of requires you to be absolutely obsessed with her to enjoy it. And I'm not there yet. I might be. As a person, I'm always going to relate more to Harrow because Harrow is a kind of a nerd. And so am I. I kind of love that. Uh, at the moment, it's very like, Harrow's annoying. Gideon's the best. And I'm like, is Gideon the best? Because Gideon keeps messing stuff up and just being generally uh, irritating. That's an entirely personal preference. But boy, it's hitting me hard at the moment. And I want to root for everyone. And I don't know who I'm meant to root for yet. Um, I am now, I think, chapter 23, just coming up to the but is everything as it seemed kind of portion of the story, which is really, really good. And I've got about another couple of hundred pages to go. Uh, and I'll definitely try and do a longer kind of conclusion so that you can enjoy me saying something coherent about this book because I'm, uh, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Right. Hopefully this was better audio, but who knows. I'm another 100 pages in, it is quarter to four. And things are getting good. Yes, things are excellent. Um, I'm enjoying this again. I think to take 300, no, 250 pages to get to where it gets good is somewhat ludicrous, but I think just necessary for a book that requires as much kind of information as this one requires. So it's 250 pages to get to the good stuff. I'm on Avi. No, I'm really liking it. This is where I think I could spoil it for you. I'm not going to, I don't think. Things things be heating, heating up. Gideon is getting more bearable by a significant amount. She's very much more bearable. Harrow remains excellent uh, and a really interesting character and one that I will definitely be really interested to read about in book two. Other characters are side characters and I don't necessarily care about them too much, maybe. But yeah, the plot's what's shining at this point. Um, there's a lot of backstory and a lot of different dominoes that already have toppled and have yet to topple and could have toppled and didn't topple and mysteries to unfold and all of this stuff. And it's just, it's good. It's good stuff. It's good fiction and it's, it's interesting. And as I say, I think the tone is what's really cool is that this could have been really pretentious and it really feels like a conscious choice has been made to not be pretentious about it. Yeah, it's it's just good. Um, I think I might do the next one on audiobook because my wife really loved the audiobook and I feel like maybe I will as well um, because I find with books that are like detail heavy that I've, like I said require this kind of brain power I do much better when I have them on audiobook. I'm at page about 360 something maybe? Bang on 360 chapter 32 and I need to read up to 444 it's 444 pages long, which is pleasingly symmetrical. So just under 100 pages to go. I'm going to read all of them, and then I'll be back for final thoughts. Welcome to fascinating content. Well, that was quite a thrilling 100 pages. Yeah, I'd say read this. Read this book, it's really good. <laughs> um, let's uh, just like, I know you will have just seen me 250 pages ago going, Meh, I don't know how to talk about books. But I think it was just that this book takes a long time to get going. 250 pages to get going. Um, but then when it does, it's really good. <laughs> I liked it a lot. It's just a lot of world building and a lot of world building that I don't think is done in a particularly seamless way. It's just a lot of stuff you have to get in. Uh, but then once that's all over with and they're like, okay, you get it, you get what's going on, you get who's fighting who, you're all good. And then it just kind of goes, nip, let's flip all of that on its head and you can all get on with actual plot and like a 50 page fight scene right at the end. Of course you can and it's good, it's good stuff. Gideon gets really good. Uh, I think part of the problem is that for the first 100, 200 pages of the book, she can't speak. Once she can speak, it's all good. Um, I say that it's, she can talk. It's complicated. Harrow got even better. There was not not necessarily romance, but like stuff that was really fun. And there's a character called Judith, which I always appreciate because there's never any character called Judith. Then again, this book's about a weird death cult, and like characters called Judith do turn up in weird books. I just 
yeah, I think this was fantastic. I think that the second book will be even better. Uh, and the way that this ends, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but the way that this ends is just borderline cruelty, frankly. I'm excited for the next book. I am. I genuinely am excited. And I don't get excited for sequels too often. Um, certainly not ones that aren't already out, because who has the time? I... We'll say, give this a shot if you've th thought about reading it, if you're not sure. If you, like me, read the first 100 pages and then went, I don't know, this is your sign to, oh, again, the giant hand. This is your sign. Go and read Gideon the Ninth. It's wonderful. The Weekend is as yet a mystery, and I have absolutely no idea how much footage I have and how much is usable because of my microphone. Who knows? Let's film an ending to a vlog. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it brought you joy. I hope it brought you a bit of insight into how I read things and how I then try and translate them into a review that is coherent, aka I do not do any of those things. If you enjoyed this, if you want to see more of me, you can hit subscribe. Uh, you can also follow me on all of my socials. You can comment below if you've read Gideon the Ninth did I read another book or another book? If you've read similar books, what's your favourite book featuring necromancers? If your answer is Sabriel, then I'll love you forever. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'm gonna be dancing. Anyway, <laughs> I will see you in the next one.